As a federal employee, do you need FEHB and Medicare? I'm JT, and this is all about FERS. Years ago, we had a client who went in for a shoulder surgery. He's age 63 and covered under FEHB. It's fantastic insurance. After the deductible and coinsurance, it was about $1,500. Well, fast forward a few years, now he's age 66, and he needs his other shoulder operated on. So he goes to the same doctors, he's still covered under FEHB, but they quoted him $25,000 for the same surgery. He asked, what's going on? This is the same surgery, same doctors and everything. They said, well, now you're over age 65, you should be covered under Medicare, but he didn't sign up for Medicare. So normally Medicare would be the primary insurance and FEHB would be the secondary, but because he didn't sign up for Medicare, he was responsible to pick up that Medicare portion and pay $25,000. So let's understand how Medicare and FEHB can potentially work together. Medicare has a few parts. There's part A, B, and D that specifically apply to federal employees. Medicare part A is for hospitals. And one common misconception is that it's free. Once you turn age 65, it automatically kicks in and that it's free. It's not free. You've been paying for it for your whole career through withholdings, but there are no additional premiums. Medicare Part B is medical insurance and it's quasi optional, meaning it's optional, but it's not really optional. And it has a premium. The premium is determined by your taxable income and there's a two year look back. So if you're going to sign up for Medicare Part B at age 65, then they look back two years to when you were age 63 to see what your taxable income was. If your taxable income was too high, you could potentially pay more for Medicare. Medicare premiums range in 2024 from as low as $174 per month to as high as $594 per month, depending on what your taxable income is. Once you're eligible for Medicare, Medicare becomes the primary and everything else becomes secondary whether that's FEHB, TRICARE, or something else. The window to sign up for Medicare is seven months around your age 65th birthday. So that's three months leading up to the month you turn age 65, the month that you turn age 65, and three months after you turn age 65. So seven month window. If you're still working and still covered under employer plan while you're age 65 and beyond, then once you retire, you have eight months to sign up for Medicare. Or if you're covered under a spouse who's still working and covered under an employer plan, the same applies. Once that spouse retires, then you have eight months to register for Medicare. The late penalty for not signing up for Medicare is 10% for every year that you wait. So it can potentially get really expensive and the penalty is permanent. Part D is prescription drugs. And generally, federal employees don't need that because the drugs are covered under FEHB. So now let's look at requirements. The first one is that you have to be enrolled in FEHB at least five years prior to separation from service. TRICARE also counts as that requirement. Second requirement is that you retire with the eligibility of an immediate pension. That's your MRA in 30, age 60 and 20, age 62 and 5 requirement. For surviving spouses, there are also two requirements. The first one is that they need to be enrolled in FEHB when the federal employee dies. The second one is that they need to be listed as a survivor on the pension. They need to be collecting a survivor's pension. Now let's talk about coordinating the two benefits, Medicare and FEHB. So Medicare becomes the primary and FEHB becomes the secondary. They actually work very well together. Many doctors aren't taking Medicare patients, so it's nice to have FEHB. On the other hand, like the story in the beginning, sometimes FEHB and other insurances will say, well, you should have signed up for Medicare, and so now you will be responsible for, for that insurance and FEHB will still be that secondary. So sometimes they require you to pick up the slack where Medicare would have covered it. So talk to your doctors, talk to your preferred providers, and see how your coverage will change once you reach Medicare age and how Medicare will affect that coverage. You'll wanna find out how they deal with Medicare. If you choose not to enroll in Medicare, that's fine. I have some clients who refuse Medicare, 
but you're taking a risk and you need to understand that risk. It's 10% for every year that you wait, and that's a permanent penalty. So if later on, it turns out that you do need Medicare, then you're going to be locked into a higher premium for the rest of your life. If you'd like help going through your benefits and coordinating these options, we'd love to meet with you. Click the link to our website below to schedule a time to work one-on-one -on -one with a federal employee benefits specialist. Until next time, happy planning.